I was doing carefully just like this instead of this which hindered me from getting the most out of this exercise. Which is a problem because it's literally one of the only two exercises that you can do for calves. Now for years I've been putting my blood, sweat and tears into training these muscles because I knew that when the rest of your body is well developed, having small calves just looks comical. And I didn't want to be a standing joke. I even felt so self-conscious and desperate that I was afraid of wearing shorts instead of pants even on hot summer days. Unfortunately, all that calf training I did had little to no success. I did however have one of the worst calf genetics you could imagine. Thin bones and a high calf insertion which hindered me from getting the big beefy calves I wanted. Though I refused to give up. I had to find something so people would stop making fun of my calves. I trained them again and again and again and just a few months ago when finishing my last set of calf raises, in the very next moment a realization hit me. I was doing calf raises wrong. You see, over the last months, there has been more and more research coming out on how training muscles in a stretched position seems to cause more muscle growth, especially in leg muscles. And that extra muscle growth can really add up a lot over time. And in that very moment, something just clicked. Because I just realized that the gastrocnemius, which is the largest part of the calf muscle, attaches just above your knee. This means it's under a bigger stretch when you fully extend your legs, but naturally even when standing straight you're not fully locking out your knees and I wasn't doing that during a calf race either, and you probably aren't too. I immediately tried to actively straighten my legs during the calf race and in that moment I was finally able to feel that big stretch in my calves at the bottom of the movement which wasn't there before. And as soon as I started using this small hack I noticed things starting to change. But it wasn't enough. My calves were getting more sore than usual, which is good, but there must have been some other things that I've overlooked. In the following weeks I discovered two extra things that were holding me back and I'm going to show you how I fixed them. I'm going to go over these two things right away but if you didn't know this already it's also necessary to pause at the bottom on a calf raise because the tendons from your calves are very elastic like rubber bands and this means that if you're bouncing the weight you're basically letting your tendons do all the work instead of the actual muscle. So making an effort to pause two seconds at the bottom to also get that big stretch will already help you a lot. Now the calf muscle consists mainly of two parts. The gastrocnemius which is most active in a straight knee position and the soleus which is most active in a knee bent position because it doesn't attach to the knee like the gastrocnemius does. These two will always work together but including some seated calf raise and standing calf raise seems to be be optimal to cover both parts. Though I would focus more on a standing calf raise because the gastrocnemius is what's mostly going to give those big beefy calves. However my second realization, and you're not going to like this, is that for both the seated and standing calf raise, but mostly the seated one, I noticed it's much easier to be a little bitch. <laughs> Rarely have I ever seen someone going to true failure on the seated calf race or have I done so myself because it's so excruciatingly painful, especially when training at the higher rep ranges. It just feels like your calves are on fire. Training to failure is relatively okay for these muscles because they do tend to recover more quickly than others and also because a lot of people otherwise don't hold themselves through to training close to failure because of the excruciating pain. <laughs> and you see because the gastrocnemius muscle attaches to the knee it's in a very shortened position when you're sitting down and when a muscle is in a shortened position I notice that you're going to feel your muscle burn a lot more. That's why I think most bodybuilders 
shoulders often have rep bicep curls at the top end of the range of motion because they feel their muscles better that way. Now we can also train at the shortened position by for example doing a dumbbell kickback because the long head of the triceps attaches to your shoulder blade. And this also counts for the seated calf raise but then for the gastrocnemius muscle. And on top of that most people I know have reported feeling a bigger burn in their calves than any other muscle. Now combine that with an exercise in a more shortened position which is the seated calf raise and you're going to experience a lot of pain. <laughs> Now, because you're going to feel that burn much harder on this exercise, it's easy to think that you're close to or at failure. However, I realized that when pushing through that pain, you can easily do a couple of reps more. To demonstrate how painful it is, I'm going to take a set to true failure, meaning I can't possibly move the weight without any help. And I'm going to tell you when I wanted to stop this exercise. Oh, I wanna quit so badly. To know if you've taken a set to true failure or even close to, after finishing your set, you're going to have such an awful burn that you just wish you could cut off your legs for just a couple of seconds. You're also going to walk a bit funny after, and if that's not the case, you didn't push hard enough. So stop being a little bitch. <laughs> now the third realization I had is that calves really don't get a lot of work done by other exercises. Sure, they will have some involvement in squats and deadlifts, but not nearly as much as for example the triceps during the bench press. Now doing six sets of calf raises in one workout to compensate for that seems a little absurd and no one wants to do that. Not only will it take a lot of time, it's also just boring. So there is something else I started implementing that drastically increased the amount of effective reps that my calves got. This something is called wrist pass sets. Let's say you normally would do three sets for 15 reps on a bicep curl. This would in total equate to 45 reps. These are your traditional sets. But with wrist pass sets, you're basically just trying to get to 45 reps with the same weight with however many sets you need. Only now after your first set to or close to failure, you rest only 20 seconds, then do another set with the same weight, then rest 20 seconds again and repeat until you hit 45 reps. Of course, you will be able to do fewer reps per set than if you waited for example two minutes, but if you repeat these short sets often enough, you will be able to get the same amount of reps a lot quicker with rest pause sets. This results in the same amount of training volume in less time. And having about the same volume should normally equate to the same amount of muscle growth. This is possible because of the fact that the first 20 seconds for example could get you back to about 50% of your performance, but to get to 80 or even 90% you would need to rest one minute longer or more. That means that the 20 seconds of rest at the beginning are more efficient at recovery. And the current research shows that rest pass sets are just as effective as standard sets and possibly even better for muscle endurance and hypertrophy. Because we know that there is a high chance that the last five reps or so close to failure cause the most muscle growth. And by using rest pass sets, you're basically staying very close to that range instead of having to reset that every set. Though a lot more research is needed, so don't start doing this for every exercise right away. And it's also brutal, so you probably even won't survive this. Knowing all this, I recommend doing three to four traditional sets and then start doing wrist pass sets until you hit the total amount of reps that you would get from doing five to six traditional sets. Doing this for calf raises seems like a solid finisher and a way to drastically increase the amount of volume you do for calves without adding 20 minutes to your workout. You will also need to stop being a little bitch and bite through the pain. Now if you find yourself often skipping calves, make sure to do them at the beginning of every workout. At the end of your workouts it's easy to quit and go home, but you're less likely to quit before you even start exercising. Now if you're struggling to build big biceps, make sure to watch this video right now because you're probably doing bicep curls wrong.